Hello boys and girls. So lately I have been reading a bunch of denoising diffusion papers as in stable diffusion, as in image generation um, with uh, machine learning models. And um, compared to some other engineering papers, these are relatively stochastic, math analysis heavy and I have a bunch of <laughs> long appendices with a bunch of manipulation and these, man these manipulations make it into some other YouTube videos, for example. And there are some nice YouTube videos in that direction. Although sometimes these manipulations there are um, a little bit more uh, complicated than they have to be because uh, certain steps are not nicely isolated, which is what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to work out a few steps that pop up over and over again there and uh, get a feel for what objects, you know, this score object in um, diffusion operations, um, for example. Um, and once you see these theorems or tricks, you might say, um, then you can also much more quickly read these uh, manipulations because these tricks are just used over and over again. Um, okay, um, so with that said, uh, let's jump right into it. First, here as a brief recap, integration by parts is going to be one of the main uh, sort of uh, moves that we are going to do. Um, a priori, uh, a, B, P, F are just two generic bounds and two generic functions. Uh, we are working on the real numbers. In practice, um, we are going to be interested in integrating from minus infinity to infinity. Like in the application, we are thinking of data space or latent space. And we have just a finite blob of data in the middle. And we don't really care too much for the in plus and minus infinity. We can think of having a distribution which falls off. There's no nothing uh, out there of interest uh, or the functions that we're integrating over fall off to zero. So all these boundary terms on the sides, they're uh, in practice, uh, as we go further, going to be null, uh, zero, uh, but I'm going to carry them along for a moment. So, okay, um, what is this theorem? You have the integration over the product of two functions uh, of which the derivative is taken over uh, of. So, you know, integral and derivative cancel each other, so to speak, and um, the this integral is just the evaluation at the bounds. And then applying the product rule to this product, uh, we have that the integral over this integrand where one uh, function is taking the derivative of equals the same product where the other function is taking the derivative of, right? There's a minus sign. Okay, so uh, remind uh, this for later. Second ingredient that we are going to make use of is the so-called score S. Score S is just, uh, you know, speaking of probability distributions, the derivative of the uh, of P with respect to uh, its domain um, divided by P, P itself. And you can write this as a derivative of the logarithm, although this is sort of a ruse because, you know, there is no transcendental um, evaluations there. This is really just this, this simple ratio. Um, and so if you multiply both sides by P, uh, then you get this relation, right? The derivative of P equals the um, score times P. So, you know, the derivative operator acts like multiplication um, by S, so to speak. But always keep in mind that this S is uh, a function of actually the true uh, distribution there, right? So we might not know this P and this also can be sort of complicated. These are just manipulations to, to rewrite this. Also this S, you know, the derivative is not gone. The derivative is part of the definition of the S. Okay, and here uh, two more notes. So firstly, as you have already seen here, sometimes I drop the uh, brackets and they're of X. I think in the whole video, X is going to be the only dependency. Um, this should be uh, then clear from the context. This is just so that things look nicer. Uh, and also, I call this the score S here, but firstly, there's other score in stochastics relating to the parameter, Fisher information, and so on and so forth, right? So this already looks like information theory, having the logarithm of the distribution there. Um, so don't confuse that. And also, I call it not just S, but S theta star, and this will be more relevant only later. I will just call it S for now. But uh, the motivation is that um, 
we are going to uh, treat S as something which we want to approximate or find uh, independ uh, like an, an object um, that is parameterized um, by some theta and this true, uh, you know, the ratio of the true uh, probability divided by itself is going to be um, what we want to get at and so this is the optimum parameter that actually gives us this thing okay but this is just for the machine learning context you can just think of it as this generic ratio or this function um okay so i'm switching context now uh, to um, measure theory or um, probability measures so here is again the integration by parts rule and if mu is a measure on this interval um, then we have that, uh, you know, d mu just means uh, the probability dx. And so this left hand side, you, you can, you know, if this p is uh, this probability measure for this, um, this distribution for this measure, then this is really just the expectation of the gradient, right? And by uh, on this, this is on the left hand side and on the right hand side you know we just said that the derivative of p equals the score times p so um, if we um, plug this in here then we have the score times p times f and so this then becomes minus the expectation value of the score times f and we can pull in this minus sign if you want um, so this is really just a rewrite where we have in now uh, taking p to be this probability distribution and um, then bringing this back together we all this just says this right so if now um, we uh, consider only distributions of functions f that fall off to zero uh, at the bounds then the right hand side is zero and uh, we have to the, um, take uh, like I have this theorem basically that the expectation of uh, the derivative of f plus the score times f where the score uh, don't forget so the score depends on p is a function of p is always zero right this is our like theorem this is like the package form of integration by parts and so we have a rule um to um how to compute the expected gradient here right the expected gradient is the same thing as the expected um, the expectation for this this product and what's interesting is here on the left side um, we speak of a gradient we speak of a derivative if you look at this numerically uh, to compute the derivative approximated you will have to evaluate the function on two points and, and compute the slope and so on uh, whereas on the right hand side um, there is no derivative uh, here anymore on the nose we just have to evaluate uh, like for example if you want to sample from this distribution and, 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 and you know estimate this expectation we just have to evaluate things point wise the, the derivative is, is gone of course the derivative is really here in this um, in the score right the score has as definition part of the definition the derivative of the true underlying distribution um, so in a sense this, this turns uh, derivative into just a multiplicative multiplicative operation this is mirrors a little bit um, the momentum operator in quantum mechanics right the momentum operator is the derivative times some constant and then by you know taking it apart into eigenstates of the momentum operator you get some um, some uh, eigenwert eigenvalue equations um but uh, you know if you don't know quantum mechanics forget this comment i will not go deeper into that comparison but it's sort of similar manipulations and ha has both origins in the um, integration by parts rule okay so uh, the funny thing however we are going to not actually use this to compute the expected gradient but really we are using this relation to go in the other direction this thing uh, as you already see here can be used to get rid of the score in uh, as argument of an expectation right so if you have um, any function of the score times some other function um, you can take this apart and and uh, just rewrite things with derivative so to speak um, like we are going to use this in the other direction uh, 
At the end of the video, I'm going to come back to this relation and show you some examples so that you have a feel for why this is true, basically explaining uh, integration by parts by uh, fairly uh, general uh, examples. This is this thing here, but I will skip forward and uh, look at the short uh, um, application first. So if we have this score function, right? If we have the function, like let's say we have, the, somebody gives us the score function, uh, P prime divided by P, then we can evaluate at every point the gradient of the distribution. And in this way, you know, if it's positive, we know whether or not we have to go left or right to go to the maximum of the distribution. So if we have the score, we can find the local uh, a local maximum or minimum of the uh, probability distribution. Um, and then relative to this maximum, you know, go further down and, and uh, evaluate uh, slopes down and thereby like find out what the probability distribution looks like, right? So this um, helps uh, find the distribution and this is also then how it's used in, in, uh, in this uh, diffusion systems. Um, so having uh, the, um, the score is nice, you know, and in these machine learning applications, you parameterize the space uh, as theta and what you want to get at is find, like tune the theta such that you get the uh, score function, the true score function, right? If there's the star, that means this is actually the thing that um, depends on P, the underlying distribution. And now we can use the theorem that we just derived uh, to do uh, this trick that you see here on screen, right? You have the expectation of the square distance between the function that you currently have versus the function that you want to get at. The problem is, however, uh, this is a priori an expectation of something which depends on P, which you don't know. But if you now use this theorem, um, you know, you take the square, like you expand the square here. We know now that we can replace occurrences of the optimal score with derivatives. That's what we do here. And so this um, expectation, right, which um, if we get a good parameters, get smaller and smaller, is replaced by this, this thing, which suddenly is an expectation, which depends on P only over uh, the expectation integral, right? So the right hand side, this thing depends on P in, as an integrand and this does not, right? We, ha we have used the theorem to get rid of this thing, which is nice. Um, there's something, there's some dependency which depends on P, but this is, you know, just fixed integral. This is constant. But the thing is to minimize this, to tune parameters, find the theta to get to something which knows about the distribution, we can also minimize this thing, which just depends on the function which we want to uh, tune. Um, which is very nice. Okay.